答えは常に塔の上にある間に合う間に合ったらアリーナに売店ぐらいあるよなアフタースクールThat means, guys, welcome back to the podcast. We're back with the webtoons.、Uh, took a little week break, and you know what? After reading the chapters that came out, I like that we took that week break because the new chapters we got were pretty good、uh, for pretty much all around the whole series here.、Uh, so let's dive right in, man. Tower of God,、uh, chapter 74 to 76, and where we were last left off, it was Bam talking to White and basically trying to figure out the situation of how he's going to deal with all this mess. Uh, but that was just a little taste of it because now we're going to focus on Yama. I think you mentioned it、uh, last episode, right, Oscar? About like, I want to see what Yama's doing, though. Hell yeah. I was just about to bring that up. They finally felt me deep down in my soul, and they're like, you know what? We need to give our boy some of that fan service. So show me some Yama love in his uh, uh, semi completion forms, you know, the, the arms, you know. I think it was a good twist. Uh, with, uh, with Mr. Sriracha over here coming out to play for a little bit.、Um, I think it's weird. The little like, trope that they used. Like, you wouldn't be able to tell because obviously you're reading it, but it's just like this full time. Like, Sriracha is able to like, somehow communicate with,、uh, with Yama or with pretty much anybody in general like, on the board like, as like, a speaker or like, over some sort of speaker. But according to him, he was inside of the box the whole time. So I'm just not sure if, you know, they're kind of spouting bullshit on that or if they're going to kind of like, you know, dive more into that, which I totally doubt because it doesn't really matter. But I just, I don't know, like that, that, part, that part kind of bothered me a little bit. The one thing they could just go off of is the,、um, what do they care? What is it called? The, not dials. What do, they, what do they carry? Oh, the pockets? Pockets. Yeah, they could just be using the pocket, right? Because isn't, isn't、uh, Yasracha is the host of the game after all, so I guess that would make sense. He can communicate with everybody? I think that he's able to probably communicate with Yama. Like, I don't know if it's maybe like almost telepathically because of you know, the, the,、like、the bloodline and how his power works with transformation. You know,、like、so maybe he's、like、just antagonizing him. You know, just him specifically, but I'm not sure. I know that everybody else has like a lot of internal monologues, you know, about what's just, you know, everything that's going on. I think the only other thing that I really liked was、uh, aside from Yama,、uh, you know, we got, we got to look at, you know, what everybody else is doing.、Uh, I like、uh, what's going on right now with, uh, uh, with, uh, what's it, Kuhn?、Uh, Kuhn and everybody else, and,、um, you know, Isu and Hats are. Uh, with the boy Cha. Yeah, yeah I, like, I like that stuff、cool. the most.、Um, especially because Hots brings up the thing I was bringing up, where it's like we're at that level where Bam's dealing with rankers, but everyone else are still normal regulars. You know, like how can they stay relevant with Bam as far as like going on this journey, trying to help him kind of thing? And then、um, Cha just says, you know, we are. Basically, an anime, right? He's just like, whatever the mind wants, the body will deliver. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's like that anime thing right there. It's like, oh, I need to get stronger. And then you get stronger. But no, I've been, I've been wanting to see more with our boy Hots, especially with the sword he has on his back, you know, because he doesn't know if he's strong enough to use it because it's a very powerful weapon. And we're, we're actually going to get to see him use it、uh, in these coming chapters. So I'm looking forward to that. Like, you know, like all these new people are cool, but I do miss the OG teams that just aren't there right now because they're so spread thin on all these different floors. And to get limelight with some of the originals, I'm like, yeah, this is nice. Oh, yeah, I like how it blends, how they blend together because, you know, Cha is an ancient warrior and, like, supposedly OP versus, like, Hots and Shibisu who are just, like, regular,、uh, or regulars. It seems like the power scaling is getting. Much, much bigger than what they can reach. And even Hot said himself, he's like, I don't think I can, I'm, I'm strong enough to walk beside him. But it's, it's, I like, I like how 
SIU just is is giving him just the OP weapons though. It's just for them to like actually have an edge in this, these battles where they're not totally getting stomped. Mm-hmm. Like honestly, I have no idea how Shibisu's like fucking <laughs> how he's there. <laughs> yeah, how how he's just staying alive with all this shit, dude. Yeah, yeah, it 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 just has to be him not hanging around when you know the the gloves are coming off. I guess. Yeah, he finds a way out. He's like the Nami and Usopp. Because, like, like, he's the same type of character as Kuhn, but even Kuhn has some stuff now to where he could handle himself. Yeah, good. Kuhn, I feel like his, his smarts are, like, are, we're getting him there. Same thing with Shibisu. But, but, yeah, like, with Kuhn, it's, I think it's, it's the, it's definitely the blood, like, his family ties that, that, that give him the edge, too. He's got that ice, ice spear now, right? That's what it was. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Like, but yeah, and that that is that a family? Um, it's a family thing. Yeah, well, yeah. Technically, yeah, he's he's cursed with another family thing because now he has the uh, the what is it the ha the, the fire. Oh the, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. He's yeah, got yeah, that yeah. weird that weird the uh, fish yeah, fish the, fucking yeah, the fire fish. fish. It, it's like it take it took the form of a fish, but it's like the flame. I don't know if you remember like the whole thing behind the. Um, um, behind that guy who went into hiding. Oh my! Yeah. And my girl, fucking, uh, what's her name? Uh, oh, I don't know if it has anything to do with her, but uh, the fire princess, like. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Her, her flame because because of, of her, yeah. her family. But that's what I'm talking about. Like, uh, the, the guy who basically woke up, Kuhn. That's his flame. That's all of his flame, in there. So he doesn't have any more powers. Kuhn has all of his power now. So I'm thinking that, you know, he could eventually learn to use the flame just like the girl can, but it's going to burn Kuhn. And so he's going to try to be like um, like that guy from My Hero Academia, the guy who has the ice and the firepower. Yeah, Todoroki. Yeah, Todoroki. Yeah, so he's going to try to do both. Like he's going to try to cool himself with his, with his blood while at the same time using the firepower so that it doesn't burn out of control. But I don't know, everything that's... Every single time, some entity, not even a person, just like an entity, has like some sort of like foreboding warning. I'm like, you know what? Don't even risk it, dude. Like, whatever he says is going to happen, just like be ready for it. Because I'm sure it's going to come in like the worst, like monkey paw, like out of the way bullshit kind of consequence. So just be ready. God, season three is going to be so fucking great. I'm ready. Jesus. Yeah, man. A lot to unpack coming up you know that i'm glad we can see what cha is really about he's really he's really just one-shotting people yeah because there he was such a big deal uh yeah. when um doan was talking about him and it's like it hasn't had a lot of screen time since then mm-hmm. it's just him chasing after doan yeah yeah so it was cool for him to show up and help the um one of the twins from fug as uh she got easily duped by uh one of yasaracha's just in uh, people in command, right? Uh, which yeah. uh, that stuff was interesting talking about. Like, I like I'm sure he was still telling the truth about the whole thing of him caring for animals and stuff. But of course, it was all just a ploy to get her there. Uh, just have her in the storage, you know. I kind of like how like Big Mom has like her unique collection of stuff in the book. It's like the same thing here in the cages. Yeah, yeah. You just wanted another like another thing to look at. Mm-hmm. Oh, also, a uh, new waifu showing up here uh, that Cha was fighting the first time, uh, the blonde one. She just kind of showed up out of nowhere, and she has, like, her own weird thing going on. Like, well, I don't... Freaking Kizaru? Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, same type of personality there. Yeah, but uh, other than that with Tower, uh, just... Uh, I am looking forward to seeing more with Yama, because that stuff with him and Yasracha about, like, fear... And, like, just this uh, innate thing that is stuck in Yama, and it's obviously it's going to have to be him overcoming this uh, fear that he subconsciously doesn't know, but it's been instilled in him since, you know, their, uh, his father died. Uh, so that's going to be a journey. Yeah, I got to say, the partial transformations, uh, they looked pretty crazy. I only remember his full transformation that he went the one time pre the hiatus, but, um, yeah, it was looking pretty wild. Very uh, hyper shonen, I guess you could say, with the arms. Well, I know that technically one of them doesn't matter anymore, but like uh, the twins, 
uh, the two girls that hold their hands, the pink and the blue one. I, I like the pink one. I like to think that she didn't really need to hold hands. Or maybe some, like, um, uh, you know, I believe in you, like, Star Wars bull crap happens, and, like, she just obtains essence, you know, of the blue one, and just becomes even more powerful. You know? Um, it really sucks what happened to the blue one, though. Oh, uh, yeah, twins, man. Uh, one's dead, right? Yes, correct. One is dead. The blue one went bye-bye. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Yes, sir. Um, but I was, I was saying that, you know, she doesn't really need it, or she doesn't really... <laughs> She doesn't. She doesn't need her sister. <laughs> oh yeah, she doesn't really need her. Or like maybe some Star Wars bull crap is gonna happen, and she's just gonna obtain her essence. You know, like she's gonna come out because blue ghost and be like, "Hey, so bro, you had it in you the whole time." Mm. Like she'll just like, be like, or just you know, just go over, pick up my corpse, you know, and just chop off the hand, you know, take it with you like Kira. I think uh, for at least for this game, I th- I think the twins serve their purpose. So maybe later down the line, because. Uh, the, they'll probably stick around with the with the rest of the cast, right? As we go further into the wall, so we'll see. One of them, will at least. Yeah, well, yeah, one of them, yeah. Uh, so we'll see where that goes. We get we get Yama's uh, form. Oh yeah, he can summon his stand now. Yeah, dude. Uh, no, we we just find out that he has a he has a stand like his brother Doom. Pretty cool, dude. Yeah. Yeah, he has like. What is it, like, black holes in his mouth? Some bullshit like that? I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, some crazy giant design that SIU loves to do. You know, like, I love how he's literally just spikes. He's not even, like... Edge Lord. That's something I would draw in high school. Middle school. Yes. High school. High school. Yes. He's fucking, uh... (laughs) Spike the super mega hedgehog. Dragon Ball Z, dude. When the hair was spiky as shit, again, everybody, everywhere had spikes. <laughs> yeah, the, the Kids Next Door episode, yeah. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> so cool, man. Yeah, I'm hyped for Tower, as usual. Man, let me tell you, viral hit. Adam kept saying, yo, these cha- these chapters are really good, you guys aren't ready. And I was like, I mean, yeah, it'll be good, you know, viral hit's good, but... Oh, hey, I was, whew, was not ready for that, man. That was a good build-up. I like... I like the cliffhanger where I'm at, and I just knew that if we did this a lot sooner, I'd be pretty... I'd be, I wouldn't even know how I would feel, honestly. I would say, just to talk about the earlier stuff of what happened, it's crazy to see how how soon this manga... Or, sorry, Manwa is taking a turn. Like, mm-hmm. this webcam yes. is, is, is developing into... Um, I would say more of like that gang mentality that we kind of knew was coming a lot sooner than anticipated in the way that it's evolving was more or less on like an adult level. It was just like, whoa, like everybody just kind of had to like take a step back when they were reading it and just be like, damn, like you're, you're really going there. Like you're trying to get really trying to get there to bring it out. And I just feel like no matter who it is, no matter who you are, every reader to an extent is gonna like try to feel that like whether you were like Hoban or uh god I never knew how to pronounce this guy's name uh or um who's which one uh the guy who owns the company the XRJ company or whatever Six oh uh, uh, Songjun Songjun yeah, Songjun Song Bake yeah you know like whether you know like on wh- whoever side you're on you know just just you can you can feel like the animosity like that hatred that's just like oh like god like god, like goddamn like that's real like there's there's a bloodlust now yeah Hoban like, was Hoban broke skin with his fists and his teeth he was he, bite he looked like he looked like uh Omni Man when fucking why did you make me do this you know with his eyes all fucking bloodshot and shit I was I was also feeling it when it came to Tahun and um and you know what's this? What's this guy's name? Yonji. Oh, Yonji. I was like, God damn, dude! Like, I, I totally feel you. And like the thing that ended up happening to his dad, I was like, Oh, oh yeah, that was fucking. Was like, that you, was that was different. I was like, you bastards! Like, you really just couldn't let him have it. <laughs> like, you yeah. really had to make him like the one time that he tries to be defiant, stand up for himself, like make something happen for himself. In one instance, you immediately take it away. Like, you give him an instant. 
consequence and a serious one at that just for all of that. I'm not saying that his dad doesn't deserve it. Don't get me wrong. But just imagine how, like, Yeonjin feels. I really hope this blows back up in this guy's face. And, like, um, Yeonjin turns around and just ends up working for him. Uh, for Hoban? Hoban, yeah. Yeah, I kind of felt like that was going to happen, too. Uh, with just the way it got resolved, or, like, he... Uh, Yonji and uh, Taihun were fighting each other and that was negatively affecting viral hit because like wait Taihun's just an asshole he's like I thought he was just hot oh we forgot he was an asshole like why is he just picking on this guy and then uh, having Yonji come in and saying like no it's all this you know this this and that and uh, that sort of helped calm things down and then also i think when once they got the uh office and we have the cutout of taihun and yonji right there i was like oh is this foreshadowing like i could feel right. like like that's foreshadowing for him to eventually show up and possibly help them uh like i think um the other gail's brother uh who uh used to be in juvia i'm sure like they'll make a comeback and help hoban deal with uh bake over here as you know, he's a force to be reckoned with, as we find out in these chapters that this uh, high school-aged person, like you like to point out a lot, Oscar, with these series, uh, he used to be in the Yakuza, <laughs> which is, uh, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. I have a de- Look, not only was he in the same Korean juvenile detention as, um, as, this, as this boxer guy, right? Because that's how they met. Yeah. Right? But somehow, within that time frame of, like, however much of a fucking badass he was as a kid, he was in the Japanese mafia. He was in the Yakuza. He wasn't in the Korean mafia. So, like, this explains, like, the whole, like, I guess I would go over the top and say, like, uh, like this is, like, his obsession with sushi, with, like everything like kind of Japanese-esque in the Korean sense like I would say he he himself might even be Japanese half Japanese like some bullshit like that you probably I mean? yeah like his name isn't his real name or he might have a different last name or whatever the fucking case is he might have this backstory where it's like oh, I'm from Japan and I was bullied all the time because I'm not accepted over there and I'm only accepted over here because um, you know, I'm famous now, blah, blah, blah. But back then, when I was little, nobody accepted me. You know, like some... I don't even know. Like, I kind of make it sound like some, like, dumbass. Like, I also think the sushi plays into his personality as well. It's a very controlled thing that you can do with, you know, food presentation. It's all about that, right? And, you know, he created this image for himself, uh, being the head of this company with all these huge YouTubers, as well as being able to control the portions and kind of have that structure as well as we find out like the reason the main reason yonji was part of bake's group is because they needed the permits from his father's company for the yakuza to build stuff in korea and then once that slips away from his hands that's when he loses his cool and says oh okay now let's go mess up hobin and try to get some order back in this damn place yeah, and I have to say, I was not expecting Bake to really do something with Hoban this soon. I thought it would take at least one more, uh, one more underling for Bake to mess with Hoban's channel, and then he could step in. Because like, oh, actually, Viral Hit's getting too big. It's time for me to make sure they they stay in the low numbers. Could have been Paco, but he got rocked. Oh, man, yeah. That shit was cathartic, bro. Was also not expecting him to have a return either. But, uh, you know, I guess... I You know, sometimes I guess I forget this is the Lickism guy, and he loves doing stuff like that, and it really works out well. Uh, yeah, with here, man, wow. Just the, the next arc leading up to this, what is Bake's plan to mess with Hobin? Uh, hey, let's hire his mom to be in these streams with the bully that he first fought in his classroom like oh man uh and you know it's it's, it really hits you hard too because the i think one of the pages before we see her there is uh hoban trying to teach her how to play the switch right oh yeah yeah like super wholesome stuff and then just to see 
she has to do these things like shave her head and all these other uh, I mean I guess the other stuff was mundane but you know just using her as a, a tool to be laughed at just to get at Hoban it's like damn that really sucks man yeah it's terrible I think the other thing that we're I don't know if you had already just talked about this but I, the other thing that we were just kind of rushing up on since you're talking about people coming back is this 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 eventual confrontation with Tahun and this guy that killed Dong? Um, uh, oh yeah, he's connected to the, it's, it's the same guy. He's the, he's the one who who wiped the uh, the guy that hit yep. um Yonji's uh, dad. Yeah, the guy that hit Yonji's dad in the face with the basketball or with the baseball. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, what's his name's cousin? Yeah, his name is Ch- all I know is his name is Chen, like Chen something. Just this guy looking around like. He, she, I, I assume that he, like, he killed him. Like, I mean, like, well, who, who, how far was it outside of that assumption? Like, he kills five of those guys and just has to write letters, just the same way that they killed one person. They have to write a letter. You know what I mean? Like, what difference does it make if you're 14? You're just gonna get away with it. But I don't know. Maybe he had a conscious. He just gave them a concussion, called it a day, like whatever. You know. But I. I, I just think that, like, whatever happens with this, however this ends up, it's going to fucking, like, be, like, devastating. Like, I think, like, we're going to get, like, just these recent kind of lookism effects where that kind of, like, damage is going to go through walls and, you know, we're going to get, like, one-hit punches that, like, knock the air out of, out of enemies, like, through the back, you know, like, when they, like, do that Dragon Ball Z shit where they hit you super hard and it's just, like just the air somehow implodes within like your surrounding and you get like <laughs> sound effects. Yeah. And we, like, we saw some of that here with Hoban. Oh yeah. Hoban was really, really giving it to him. The build up to this beat down Hoban was giving was great too. Of like, oh he's missing. Uh we go into his room, there's just blood and broken equipment in there. And uh, I know it's like a bunch of protein uh, mixed in there. I'm like, oh, are we gonna see like a like a pretty buff Hoban? Like, like how, how how much is the time frame between the last time we saw him and when we're gonna see him now, kind of thing? And it's like, oh, he went to go see Taihun, and Taihun's just like, well, yeah, he wanted me to train him, but um, he's fighting just a, an average bully. He could beat average bullies no problem now. And we and then after he says that, we just see him kick Park goes ass, and all he, all I could say was. Hell yeah, this is great. Yeah, it it it's like uh, you get the same satisfaction. You get the same satisfaction when uh, Daniel was fighting Logan during the the runaway arc in Lookism, right? And you're like, oh, f- like finally, oh, yeah. like we're seeing something like this happen. Just that relief he had before he got the reveal about Bake is the one that actually hired his mom, um, and like that confidence he had was just like, you know, uh, I guess the company went under you know let's let's go eat You're like we don't have to worry about this anymore you know and then just him showing straight up to the restaurant and said yo bake what the fuck dude like i said i wasn't expecting this route i thought we were gonna see something like a lot later but this pacing is great right now yeah i hope they keep this up just for a little bit longer um before things die down although i kind of don't think that's gonna be the case um i i did notice that what what's happening is when we get a confrontation we sometimes get some kind of an instant gratification that always kind of backfires mm. so in this instance you know like we we just saw how this backfired where he got back at him by getting his mom onto the contract and so now i bet we're gonna have like at least a chapter or maybe two three chapters where they're gonna delegate what do we do what do we plan what's the next move we're gonna see him refer to a video if anything you know what? You know what? What else can I learn? What can we be taught? Like, what kind of enemy? Like, am I gonna like? Well, you know how to fight against next, whatever. Um, but ultimately, I think what it's gonna come down to is we're gonna get a lot more. I would say one-on-one time, probably between Tahun and Yeonjun, just because you know this thing that's happening with his dad, and I think that he's gonna turn around and just be like, you know, you told me to do anything that I wanted, I told my dad what I wanted to do, and this is what ended up happening to him, you know, like just regardless of, of your friends showing up, of everybody trying to support me, like whatever like I don't give a fuck, you know like this is how I feel, and I feel like with that, you know, we can have this this guy, um, 
Mr. Uh, Mr. I don't even know how fucking old he is, honestly. I'm gonna say he's like 17 or 18. Fucking uh, Mr. Exikuzo over here. Talking about how he's, you know, like gonna try to make sure that he, he keeps his meal ticket going. He, he talks about it like it's already ruined. That's why he did that to his dad. And that he wanted him dead. You know what I mean? He doesn't know that yet. So I think that with that being said, as long as he doesn't know that, then that's fine. But what is going to happen, without a doubt, is this Chen guy is going to spill the beans. He's going to figure it out. When that happens, Yeonjun is either going to kill him or Tahun is going to stop him from killing him. Right on, man. And, you know, just to compliment on the art of how the like all the shading and all that worked, especially with Hoban when he was pissed every, every single time to see him biting his lips and all that stuff. Like, I was like, oof, that's that's intense art right there. Heck yeah. And uh, moving on uh, to lookism, workers 13 to 15. Yeah, we get to see Ultra Instinct Daniel just do what I expected him to do, which is wreck pretty much everybody there. I was like, you know, it, it's cool to see like the fights because like, it can get pretty intense. Especially, like, the moment where he grabs Johan by the ankle and just throws him onto the wall. Just to show how absurdly strong this Daniel is. Uh, but no, there's a lot of other great stuff in this chapter. Like, the unexpected uh, appearance of Goo out of nowhere just showing up. And uh, did this Daniel having to fight him. Like, I thought that was pretty good. I like how it makes you think it's gone with the way he's dressed. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that that really got me. Like surprise, bitches! It's me, your boy Jungu, coming to fuck shit up. Daniel doesn't give a fuck. Like Johan, he just throws him around, just keeps socking him some. Okay, so maybe you guys can help me remember this, but didn't Goo beat the shit out of Daniel the last time that they saw each other? I maybe, don't... but he was. I don't think he was in uh, Ultra Instinct. He tried to ask him to be a secret fan, and when he declined him, I could have, I could have sworn I remember him. Oh yeah, he got, he got knocked out. Yeah, yeah. Because it was Daniel. It wasn't. Uh, it was. It was, it was an Ultra Instinct. The big body or the little yeah. Body? No, it wasn't the Ultra Instinct, Daniel. He was still conscious. The Ultra yeah. Instinct is a monster because that's what. From that's what, what it looks like, that's what what, what fucking gun no, no, is no, no, like twenty four seven, dude. What are you talking about? I'm asking if. If what body he was in when he no yeah he's a, he uh, was he, in yeah he body. was in the handsome one, but it just yeah. wasn't ultra instinct. That's that's yeah. the big difference, right? That's no. My my whole thing was like he was trying to like calm him down, like as if they were friends, you know, as if he was having a conversation with him, like hey, you know, like this isn't how it went last time, you know, you need to calm down, you know. Oh, you're friends, talking about like, you're Goo- making me upset, you know, like hey, Goo- yeah, saying like, that? I was talking to him. Oh, but that's just Goose character. He's super casual. Yeah. Okay, well, I just I just thought that there was something behind that because I no. Well, the the went. thing behind it is he didn't want to fight Daniel at that moment. Like he didn't come here to fight, uh, but then he does fight, and then we find out his specialty is mainly in swords, and just seeing his uh, little kendo stance. <laughs> yeah, and then he actually has a serious face for and the uh, and, like, and the, the, the eye strike. Times. That's fucking crazy, dude. Yeah. <laughs> And then, That's hey, nuts. another, like, nothing but surprises and great moments in these chapters. Like, when, when they told uh, Daniel to run away, right, while Jake and Samuel fight uh, Ultra Instinct mode, I thought Daniel was going to come back because he, cause he was thinking, he's like, who else is strong enough to fight me? And I was, I was thinking he was going to say, wait, I could do it, right? I'm, I'm confident with the training. I thought he was going to fight himself. But no, that's when Johan showed up. But then, you know, the, the surprise after Goo, who else shows up? Freaking Logan is here! Holy crap, man! Yeah, that was that was a that was a weird turn, Un- really unexpected. Yes, but it is for the best, I think, because oh, like, yeah. like I mentioned earlier, what was great in the Runaway arc was Daniel versus Logan, and now we're gonna get the rematch, man! Like just the uh, frust, I, I guess the anger in Daniel's face, as well as like. He's confident he could just whoop Logan's ass now after all that training he did. I can't wait to see that fight this is, happen. But this is what I believe. But like my predictions, dude, Daniel's going to get rocked. 
You think so? Cause, yeah, because because Logan, Lo, this whole time Logan has been with fucking workers, dude, and, and with with working with June. Oh, Goo, okay. And and like, uh, I'm pretty much in contact uh, because of that. I'm I'm like guessing he's in contact with Tom, like, a, pretty much a lot. I, I don't know, like every day, but like every once in a while. So like, he's been with some big heads, like. So he's, 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 he's been up there, stronger, so he's, right? We, we don't yeah, know he's his been, current uh, strength. He's been kind of training. Uh, I don't I, like in a weird way, you know, like how the fuck, how fucking Daniel was training with the, uh, um, the Russian lady. I forgot her name. Yeah, I forget it too. But yeah, like it, it's gonna be like that, dude. That's what I'm. That's what I'm fucking. That's my prediction. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Uh. I think he'll be surprised at first by all the techniques Daniel will be throwing at him. Um, and then maybe he won't even realize it's Daniel until after a certain point. Maybe Daniel says something in the middle of the fight, and that's when Logan changes his uh, uh, his um, his take on this fight, I guess, and then dominates, like you're saying. I could see that happening. Yeah. But um, yeah, all all these little pieces just coming in, and uh, oh, it was great too with our boy Jerry Kwan, right? Just saying sorry, Jake, but uh, I have to do this, right? He has to show his full strength, right? Which is oh yeah, which who knows if it's stronger than Jake at that point? Because uh, it's all in the air, bro. Everybody, everybody's had like a two year arc, and they've come back. But everybody got their shit kicked at once, right? Like fighting Akuma, like fighting a like a what were those things called? Su- Sumas. It's it, it's it sucks for it sucks for our boy Zach Lee though. He's still kind of trash. Yeah, he's, but it, he's it's fucking, all good. He's fucking <laughs> trash. Too. Every every yeah, every, he's, every he's, time he's <laughs> come out, every time he's come out in a panel, dude, it, he's always getting rocked by somebody, dude. He's the regular out of the uh, <laughs> out of all rankers. the irregulars to do straight up. Oh, <laughs> uh, poor yeah. Zach. Uh, but it's, all... it's like we said, man. Like boxing, so limited. Uh, yeah, I, I think what's going to end up happening is as after the end of this arc, everyone is going to have like their recovery periods, and Zach is going to be like the one who's just like he just dropped out of school to recover, like as like a. As like a segue into like his own like, uh, like his own little like mini you know, mini chapters on how he's gonna get better, you know, kind of like how Bosco takes those like vacations, those those periods where he gets stronger, like they just do that as comedic effect, but it still works for Bosco. Every time Bosco gets caught up in really stupid situations, like where he had to get a job, he comes back and he's like, oh yeah, now I know how to do fucking Muay Thai. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Yeah, yeah, really, like only like only Bosco pretty much you know yeah but why not zach i mean like he needs something dude and he needs it fast because he's really not important right now and he's nowhere near important you know like johan is his own fucking thing now and he's gonna be his own thing yeah like you can't compare it to zach will come back when johan's gonna need him uh to either put him in his place or just someone who understands johan's situation more uh, but that's probably not going to be for a good while. Yeah. Uh, what else are we talking about? Um, uh, as usual, music's great, right? Uh, different tracks coming in here, there. Yeah, no complaints. It's it's still pretty hyphy. And if I don't know about you guys, but whenever I, I I keep saying this, like whenever I listen to it, um, it's always like at a good part where I'm reading. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like when when the music's kicking in, I was like, ooh, I need to get to the the moment that's gonna make it really hype. When, yeah. While I'm listening to it, yeah. When the drop happens. <laughs> Yeah, man. So look is um just doing fantastic stuff, man. Can't wait to see what's gonna happen next. And finally, let's hop into God of High School, five nineteen to five twenty one. 
we're finally in the moment where our boy uh, Mori comes in at the end. And um, we, yeah, we got some other stuff too, man. Freaking Dusik Kim shows back up. Like, we were just... Fuck, yeah, boy. Like, we just brought that up not that long ago, right? Of like, yeah, what happened to him? He's come to collect his debt, bro. Yeah. Dusik Kim always collects. Dude, I'm so hyped. I'm so hyped. I hope he makes it, man, because... I hope somebody just revives him, <laughs> like everybody else. I know, dude. Like so I got, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. When he showed up and he died the first time, I was like, "Oh, that's it. That's it. you're gonna right. bring the boy back and and like this badass guy, and then he's gone like that." Mubong is entertaining. What Dusik wants to say, uh, it's true, pretty much, right? Everything that Dusik respected about Mubong is gone because. Yeah. Mubong just threw away a lot of those ideas once he realized, oh, we're just human or whatever his weird, twisted uh, ideology is at this point, right? I, I have to, like, go back and listen to the episodes, but I'm pretty sure this is almost everything that I was talking about. He discarded everything. He's always talking about one thing and then doing something completely different all the time. At this point, he dis- he just abandoned every single aspect of himself. And it's just like, fuck it, dude. Let's just start over. At least if I start over, I'll destroy the past. Nothing can remind me or, you know, ever bring it up again. Nobody will basically know what I've done. You know what I mean? Because no- it-, it just basically doesn't matter. All this is is a means to an end for him to run away. For him to run away from every mistake that he's met, that he's, that he's just basically you know been consumed of and it it just really just took a toll on his soul it really did quite literally consumed him you know that's what i'm saying it's it's just turned him into such like a twisted version of himself that he thinks he's so self-righteous he's gone and acquired this power and even acquired you know gaia by having like this silver tongue you know he's he's really no better than like an actual devil and i think that it's only going to be after this final confrontation right now with Mori that we're going to see that. Yeah, so we're going to get, I think we're going to get a lot of that because just the fact that Mori's back and seeing him kick all the other uh, people's asses, which I was still a little disappointed in. Like, that, they're the fodder, like the four guardians or whatever. And to have Mori just come in and just deal with it instead of having, you know, uh, everyone else fight them, I was like, ah, oh, that, that always kind of sucks in stories like that where the main character is just I mean it's it's to show how strong Mori is right now to easily defeat the deer and kick in the bunny's ass sure but what is everyone else gonna do bro but my the the fucking dragon dude I feel so fucking Man. bad for him dude that he had the worst of it dude that that just just having his ribs just come out of his di- already corpse and he's just waiting to get killed man and he's still alive during the whole thing it's it's just it's just it's crazy what they all fucking do. Like it's not it, it no there's no holds barred, dude. It's it's savagery at its finest. It sucks, but fuck. I was just about to ask you because I'm agreeing with Jerry, Jerry, uh, sorry Danny on that one, Jerry. Like, do you know for sure when he was confirmed dead? Because Banto is the only one saying that he is confirmed dead. Well, he's I don't know. He's like I feel like he's kind of still hanging on because they still like have use for him. But I feel like the when it happened was it was when fucking Daiwi blew him, blew a hole in him with the fucking uh, the fist of the human or whatever the fuck it is. When he used like that power where that had all the forces of nature to it. Yeah. And, and then he just he just punched a hole in uh, Rion. That's his name. So it, it was, I feel like it was there where he kind of. If he's not dead, he gave up because I I'm pretty sure you guys saw like the. The determination in his in his will and attacks fade as, as he kept talking to Daiwi and hearing like, "Oh man, maybe I fucked up by choosing the wrong side instead of like hating uh Mori for like killing my master even when he was supposed to or whatever or eating my master." So I think I think what happened with him was he was still alive when you know his body rose up in the prior chapters where I thought he was dead. Because he does have that conversation with, I believe, the with Bamto, whatever the thought bubbles were, right? Like, he was talking then. It's like, oh, so he's still conscious. But then 
for sure when he's just lying there on the ground and they're just using his ribs, I'm pretty sure he's dead because I'm there was there was that one piece of dialogue where it said like oh like his corpse is still useful kind of thing. Yeah. So I think like in those moments between him barely staying alive, just seeing everything happen and then dying uh, happened in these chapters. Yeah. Which, um, yeah, it really sucks to see, man. Especially when this, um, what is it, another Mori clone or something popping up with the mask? I mean, still, like, uh, even Wong himself was like, you guys are just tools. Like, I, I have no need for you. Or something or something along those lines of, like, you guys yes. are useless to me besides this one thing. Yeah. You're just so a it, means to an end. Yeah. And eventually, it, you're going to, your service will be fulfilled, and then that's it. It, it, it's really showing how like he really did give up everything, even his own. He no allies or nothing, just yeah. the chosen people. I mean, even giving up himself, right? As we saw with the uh, last thing he said goodbye to, and it's him holding um, Mandok's uh, sister in his arms as she oh, yeah. passed. Yeah, yeah, crazy stuff, man. And yeah, super, super. Like, oh, everyone's the planet is being destroyed, literally. Like, it's crazy. We see Dean still alive, trying to keep Sujin Lee alive. And uh, just the struggle of keeping the Earth intact as Mubon creates new Falconia on this other planet, right? Did you just say new Falconia? Yeah. Yep. That's the first thing I thought of. I looked at it, I'm like, mm, look at these white buildings. It really that's is. This, that's a utopia for the future. I was like, oh, okay, Berserk. Yeah, of course. Yep. Yeah, but then comes in Mori Jin with all these ribs from these other dragons and just starts destroying it. And man, I like how they don't look the same either. Like each one is freaking unique. Yeah, that was cool. I didn't expect that. I thought they were all either just gonna be the the gray pillars or red. And he I... made, and, they're, and they're made of wings. One of you guys said that. Oh, those are his wings. Just like all the all the fucking dragon pillars. Yeah, because right, the prophecy mentions red wings, and I was thinking, like, oh, maybe because he's going to be having all these pillars floating behind him as he uses them. That could be, like, the quote-unquote wings. But, man, Mori coming in, like, you know it's go time. Because not only is he here, but just like last time, before all of this happened, when he was fighting Mubong, I guess before uh, the war was declared, right, and how just sinister he looked like he is here for revenge and there's just a shot of him holding bamto with his glowing eyes and it's like oh yeah mori's looking hell of intimidating right here i like how it ends i i i, I don't i don't know actually i don't i don't really like how that ended with that with that with that shot of him holding yeah him. yeah yeah i mean it'd be cool i mean if it ended with just that but like with the fucking the other mori clone supposed um, just the yeah. reaction. I'm like, that was kind of weird. That was kind of weird spot to end at. If it was just Mori looking back and be like, what? That'd be fucking. That'd be hot. Oh, just a <laughs> glance. Yeah, like yeah, because yeah, the last panel is just this guy in the mask. Yeah, yeah, and um, oh, you know. What? I mean, I guess I guess it entails to what the next chapter is gonna be. Just like what the fuck this guy's deal is. Yeah, I hope it's not a clone. Um, yeah, that's what we're all thinking, though, man. It is a clone. <laughs> Yeah. Whatever happened to whatever happened to the last clone that he just yeah. fought? Uh, she fucking the the bunny calls him a fucking monkey, dude. Like that's some racist freezer shit, but you know, <laughs> yeah. isn't it the guy who took the thunderbolt? I thought he was still alive. Oh, it could it could be? Um, I think he definitely doesn't look the same anymore. Like now he looks like totally different. I don't think this is him. This this is gonna this is somebody else. Um, I think it might be like not even a clone, but like. Maybe, like Maybe it's a, his other half. Like because a splinter. I think could it's be. more like a splinter of his power, like of a, like a, like an original clone from way way back. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, when we see Mori first hop in, right? One of the shots we see is the actual Song Wukong look, right? It was like an actual monkey wearing the crown and everything. Um, and then made me think, like, oh, is that Mori's true form then? Because as we see with uh, the goat. Uh, he gets his uh, goat head, right? Instead of just the instead of like a, a cute anime boy with antlers, right? We're getting like some B stars action going on, dude. Here. That that's some bloodborne shit, dude. Or that's that a yeah. that's the uh, 
that's that yeah that was cool like it's it's really like a uh, old world wiccan kind of like fucking uh, some kind of ritualistic kind of thing like it's almost like Baham- the, the skull of bahamut where it's like it's just a goat head mm, right yeah. but it's but it's a giant elk scary <laughs> everybody definitely got more terrifying with their fucking like second form i think that's that that's for the better right yeah, fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, poor Ryong, though. He, he got the shit end of the stick. I know, there's just that shot of just him lying there with his ribs out, yep. holding holding on to um, the city, right? I think that's what it's... Yeah. I think so, yeah. No, no, sorry, it's holding the, um, the power pole. That's what it was holding. Uh, but, uh, like, the, un- the unspoken thing here is that, like, just... The fact that Mori comes back with all these uh uh, uh the pillars as Mori Dan though. Yes. So as... so the boy the boy fucking did it, dude. He I remember like you guys remember the 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 shots of him just trying his fucking like shitting bricks to move that fucking pillar, dude. Mm-hmm. That shit like it, it, you don't you don't need to see what's going on. Like once he once he made it into the belly and just like saw all these pillars that he has to move and he just determined to move it all as Mori Dan. Like that you already know what he's doing in all this time. Like you, you just you just gotta see cuts of him just trying his trying his best. And like that I feel I don't know, for me that, that was good that was good enough. Like uh, there was I know there's a lot of people fucking just reading this for Mori Mori I forgot his name in now. It's Mori Jin, right? Well yeah this form's Mori Dan. Yeah, um, but like Mori Jin yeah. is the original. Like, there's no Mori Jin. Yeah. I'm like, uh, oh yeah, it, it, it's it's all it's all good. Like, I I, I honestly don't care. Like, th- this this guy has some shit to do. Daiwi was fucking feeling a, a bunch of that shit up, honestly, with this fight with Ryong. Mm-hmm. So it, it's it's like, I I could see back then where we were like, yeah, man, I'm missing Mori. It's that cal- it's that character development that's leading to now that we're like, all right, so he has to do some shit. Because he's been away for a while, and he's kind of owe us, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I mean, we kind of saw it, we saw a little taste of it, right, with the brutality going on here. Um, and I, I guess he killed Bamto, right, with uh, with yeah. one of the pillars. Just how no. like? No, no, no. He didn't kill her. He just he just uses the weapon through her because he's just. Like, oh have to yeah. Her. Oh, okay. Dude, yeah. Because yeah, these pillars are fucking nuts, dude. They. They have like the, the it, it's it's amazing. Like it could pass through actual physical objects and shit. Yeah, like how um, Dawei when uh, he was being attacked by the dagger, he's just like, so that could just break the laws of physics, huh? Okay. <laughs> like we're already in that territory now. Yeah, that dagger's fucking OP, dude. Like they they only showed a few, like the bell, the dagger, a few of the fucking weapons. Mm-hmm. It, it was pretty. They're pretty good. Yeah, Tagatha had them key codes, man. <laughs> How many weapons? I mean, items all together. It's, um, it's crazy. It's a good. It's a. It's a. It's a grip. I know that. It's but like it's double just, digits. I think. Yeah, it's. I feel like it's too much because they're they're only showing like. Three of them, four of them. Yeah, I think uh, it, they were talking about the robe, right? Where they said like, "Oh yeah, that power comes from these weapons." I think you mentioned yeah, like the art, the the subtle art change here. With some of this stuff uh, was great. Like the way Bam- Bamto's eyes were drawn when she quote unquote went to her true form, I guess. Which I thought it was gonna look more animalistic, like with the deer, but no. She oh just... no, sexy means power now, dude. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, yeah. Look at um, look at Mira too, right? Fuck yeah, dude. That, that mm-hmm. arm just that arm and the mixed with the silver hair. Mm-hmm. The eye patch under the glasses. and the eye patch, bro. Fucking, it's like a female big boss, bro. I, you got me. I'm in. And then she's got the scars too, bro. On yeah, the arms. buddy. Yes, you sir. know I like my scars. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, power. Sexy means power. That's the. Uh, that's the moral. Yeah, of I this, retain, of this I podcast, some, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad. Uh, got a high school's picking up the pace with the quality here. Um. Uh, but I think that that's all I really have to say about got a high school right now. Just, of course, looking forward to more, and yeah. 
I was trying to think. Uh, I think I'm thinking of Golden Kamui when it said the last arc was the next, the final arc. Yeah, that's Golden Kamui, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, for some reason, I thought it was this one. Because it, it feels like it's coming to an end. Yeah, we're in the final stages. Let's just see how many steps it's going to take to get to the final fight. Um, which, I, I don't think it'll take that long because... I mean, there's really not a lot of characters here on Mori's side to help join in on this fight. Plus, anyway. Mubon, Mubon being fucking god, he can, like, pretty much instant transmission anywhere he wants. So, like, there's no... I feel like after... I, it should be. After these four... Uh, uh, after these last three god fights and, uh, and the whole fucking... I really, like, okay, I'm with you when you say, like, I hope the, the dude behind the mask isn't another Morty clone, because I, I that's just an, another arc. <laughs> yeah, we have to get into flashbacks, <laughs> motivation, his frustration of being a fake, and all of that. Uh, know, after like, after all after all of these old god fights, like, it should be Mubong, because, fuck, man. Or, dude, like, it could be Tagata, though. Like, not even Mubong anymore after, after Mubong. And then Tagata mm. just comes through, man. That'd be fucking. I, I don't know. I'm just kind of speculating, but it's 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 there's a, there's a few ways it can still go. It's sadly, but I mean, sadly in the fact that like I want this to end because it's so close. Like I, I want a conclusion, but when it's over, like what am I gonna do with my life? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to find the next. Uh... It feels like it's ending. Like it's well, not. Yeah, like, he, we he we are caught up. <laughs> he confirmed that whatever this, um, I guess it, he doesn't call it seasons. He calls it chapters, right? Yeah. Um, like, yeah, it's, was it five or six is the, this is the final one. Chapter six. Yeah. But, uh, all right guys. Yeah. I think that's going to wrap us up this week for the webtoons. All a pluses across the board, really hitting the, the nails on these ones. And so while we wait for, future chapters to come out next episode you can send us an email on verse podcast gmail.com any questions or comments and then uh, we'll bring those up on the next episode of course and then uh unverse podcast anywhere on social media if you want to stay up to date with uh, the episode releases so thank you guys and we'll catch you on the next one Peace.